This video was made possible by Mizizi International, the official African diaspora clothing brand. Visit MiziziShop.com for more information. It is no secret that the Sahel region has become a hot of terrorism in Africa, with various extremist groups exploiting its vast, ungoverned spaces for recruitment, training, and launching attacks. The combination of political instability, economic challenges, and ethnic tensions in the Sahel has created a fertile ground for the proliferation of terrorist activities, posing a significant security threat to the region and beyond. America has been very active in counterterrorism efforts in the Sahel, but its deployment of drone bases in the region has been a complex and controversial element of its counterterrorism strategy. Since the early 2000s, the U.S. has established partnerships with several Sahelian nations like Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger, granting access to drone operations aimed at disrupting the movements and activities of jihadist groups like Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State. However, in an interesting turn of events, America is now seeking to establish drone bases in coastal West Africa, specifically in Ghana, Ivory Coast, and Benin, signaling a monumental shift in its counterterrorism efforts on the continent. Why is America now looking away from the Sahel and focusing on these coastal West African states as the new hosts of its drone bases in Africa? And how could this shift impact counterterrorism efforts on the continent? In today's video, we will offer deep insights into these questions and more. Before we dive into our topic today, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channels and ringing the bell to be notified about all our exciting future videos. American and African officials have officially confirmed that the U.S. is seeking to base military drones along the West African coast in an urgent effort to halt the spread of Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State in the region. The United States is in preliminary talks to allow American unarmed reconnaissance drones to use airfields in Ghana, Ivory Coast, and Benin, all of which are countries on the Atlantic Ocean. America has reportedly proposed basing drones at Ghana's Air Force Base in Tamala, which is close to the Burkina Faso border. According to a senior U.S. intelligence official, three Ivory Coast airfields are also being considered. And in Benin, the U.S. has its sights set on Paraku, a town far enough from the Burkina Faso border to provide a buffer against militant ground attacks while remaining within striking distance of the volatile north. Drones may also be used to gather aerial intelligence on pirates operating in the Gulf of Guinea. So, why is the U.S. pushing to base its military drones in Ghana, Ivory Coast, and Benin? First and foremost, this is because the situation on the ground in the Sahel region and countries has complicated America's counterterrorism efforts to an extent that the U.S. now has no choice but to look elsewhere to operate. Indeed, the Sahel region, particularly Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger, faces a complex and evolving security landscape plagued by jihadist groups affiliated with Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State. Since 2017, these groups have unleashed violence, claiming the lives of over 41,000 people and displacing millions. The situation on the ground varies depending on location, with rural areas often bearing the brunt of attacks and instability. While security forces fight back, the groups exploit weaknesses in governance and porous borders, making counterinsurgency efforts challenging. Further complicating the situation has been a wave of military coups in the most violent countries in the Sahel. Mali, Niger, and Burkina have all experienced coups in recent times, and all three military regimes ordered the withdrawal of French troops who had been leading the West's military response in the region. These countries then turned to Russia, holding various talks on military cooperation in recent months with various Russian officials. The coups triggered U.S. laws that limit security assistance to military juntas, as well as disrupting the U.S. military strategy of sending American commandos to the region to train elite local units. For instance, the U.S. constructed a $110 million base in Agadez, 
Niger, and station approximately 1,100 troops there to train local commandos and provide real-time oversight and intelligence during Nigerian army counterterrorism operations. However, immediately after the Niger coup in July 2023, the United States suspended military aid to Niger and reduced its troops' presence to approximately 650 troops. Consequently, the effort to build up American forces in the coastal states suggests that Washington believes Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger are so overrun with Islamist militants that they are now untrustworthy and beyond Western saving. The Niger coup has forced our hand, said retired Air Force Major General Mark Hicks, the former chief of U.S. Special Operations Troops in Africa. There's really not much option other than to fall back and operate out of the coastal West African states, he added. Secondly, America is turning to Ghana, Ivory Coast, and Benin as new bases for their military drones because these three coastal countries are feeling the tremors of terrorism in the Sahel in several ways. Indeed, these countries, which are relatively stable and prosperous, are now under threat from Islamist militants surging south from Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger as the conflict spills over. The spillover effect includes heightened security concerns as jihadists seek new recruits and escape routes, economic disruptions due to border closures and tourism fears, and social strain as displaced populations flee conflicts in the north. This proximity also creates fertile ground for extremist ideologies to exploit existing grievances, risking long-term destabilization and potential future attacks. Already, there is enough evidence to suggest that these countries are more unstable than they used to be due to the spillover from the terrorist action in the Sahel. For instance, Benin, which is closest to both Burkina Faso and Niger's borders, has suffered the most so far. According to the Pentagon's Africa Center for Strategic Studies, 120 people were killed in 114 militant attacks and other violent incidents in Benin in the first nine months of 2023, up from 72 incidents in 2022 and five in 2021. Similarly, Ivory Coast has suffered 16 attacks since 2020, but none during the first nine months of 2023. And although no militant attacks have occurred in Ghana, the government has reported the discovery of several militant cells within the northern part of the country. While these coastal governments are bolstering security and seeking regional cooperation, it is clear that the Sahel's turmoil presents a clear and present danger to their stability and prosperity. Coastal West African countries that used to be insulated no longer are, said a senior U.S. military official. Although the level of violence on the coast pales in comparison to that in the Sahel's core countries, U.S. and local officials are concerned that the militant groups intend to expand their reach south into these coastal nations, rich in gold and cocoa. Consequently, the U.S. believes that having drone bases in these countries is a proactive way to ensure they are supported in their fight against terrorism spillover from the Sahel. Drones would enable American forces to conduct aerial surveillance of militant movements along the coast, as well as provide tactical advice to local troops during combat operations. America's push to establish drone bases in these countries presents a complex mix of potential benefits and challenges. Proponents argue drones offer precise intelligence gathering and strike capabilities, potentially disrupting jihadist recruitment, movement, and attacks before they reach coastal regions. This could bolster regional security, strengthen fragile governments, and deter further expansion of jihadist influence. Moreover, these countries would enjoy all these benefits of a high-end drone fleet without incurring the cost of purchasing the equipment themselves. However, critics raise concerns about potential civilian casualties, inflaming anti-Western sentiment, and the long-term effectiveness of drone-based counterterrorism strategies. Additionally, drone bases might not address the root causes of Sahel instability, potentially creating a temporary bandage instead of tackling the broader issues driving extremism. Ultimately, the success of such bases hinges on their integration into a comprehensive regional strategy that prioritizes development, governance, and local partnerships alongside military efforts, 
aiming for long-term peace and stability across the entire African continent. Your perspective matters. Do you think Ghana, Ivory Coast, and Benin should allow American drones into their territories to help combat terrorism threats from the Sahel? Share your insights and thoughts in the comments below. For continued updates on global affairs and diplomatic developments, be sure to subscribe to the New Africa channel. Stay informed, stay engaged. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to bringing you more insightful content in the future.